So the path of practice basically is, here's the thing, here's what I want to create by having this, is that I want people to have an experience where we can work one-on-one, -on -one. because in my experience I've spent some time with some pretty incredible teachers in my life, but I didn't go the route of, like when people say, oh, I'd like to do a yoga teacher training, do you have any recommendations? And I usually think, well, you should find a teacher and then ask that person, what would it take to teach? Uh, it's for the old school way, but I think it's the most effective way rather than like go to a organization, pay your money and get your ticket. Mm -hmm. I think that's how we think about school and education. And there is, I think there's even a, an issue with that. Like you should study with people you want to study with, not just to get the accolades. Because uh, we might have talked about this in a previous video, but I think that there's, there's learning to learn something and then there's learning to get something. And those things are different. And I think learning to learn something is the best and most effective path and learning to get something. There are people who learn to get something who don't really learn. Look at our healthcare system. You know, it's like there are all doctors created equal well, I know they're not because I've had experiences with them, but the ones who are there to learn something, maybe they're there to learn something and get something, that's great. But if it's just to get something, it becomes empty. So I say all of that to, to say, you know, I've spent time with teachers that are great masters that I've said, I wanna spend time with them. And so I do whatever that looks like. Maybe it's a teacher training program. Maybe it's living at their home with their family. Maybe it's, moving to a new place and just spending time with them all the time. Maybe it's going to their studio, even if it's in another city, you know, I've done all those things, including it's down the street and you go every single day, you know, that's the more basic side. And, and I want people to, to remind people that that's an important thing. And I think we're creating something at Dharma, we've created something at Dharma Temple where I believe that every class is really useful and beneficial and I especially the foundation of that studio is to bring the teachings of Kundalini Yoga and Dharma Yoga or Hatha Raja Yoga uh, together and using other things like ritual practice, community-based events uh, to give people an integrated experience of yoga. Well, some people still have the mentality that yoga means you buy a pass, you go to a studio, you learn to do some poses, work out, sweat, and then go home. Well, we have that, but that's only one small piece of the pie. And, and the reason why it's important to get the whole pie is because it will affect your life in a really useful way. Like, say you're struggling with depression, say you're struggling with anxiety, say you're struggling with addiction to substances, and that could be anything. Say you want to learn more about yoga philosophy, say you want to deepen your meditation practice, say you want some help with your relationships, say you want you know, to learn more about prosperity and uh, get a new job, or you know, like a, an integrated yoga practice should be able to support you to do all those things. Well, just going and doing the postures won't by itself. And so we've created a space where people can do that, but they have to do all the, pra all, not all the practices, but those two primary practices, I think, personally. Uh, but people don't wanna do that. They wanna go to, I do this type of yoga and I don't do that type of yoga. And we're conditioned to think like that, you know? It's like, do you like this food or that food? Like I play that game with my daughter all the time. Like, would you rather go for Japanese food or Mexican food? Would you rather have a cat or a dog? Would you, and that's a fun game to play with a child, but that's kind of, I think Ram Dass once called it the yuppie paradigm. It's like, we don't experience things as they are because we're so caught up in our preferences. And I was sharing to the students this, uh, this morning about uh, I was sharing with them this morning about this uh, concept of the novice and the master. And in this concept or story of the novice and the master, I was saying, when you're a novice, you go to the yoga studio 
because you want to do your practice. You want to get your exercise in. You want to get learn the new and fancy poses. You want to be with the teacher that you think is the best. You want to do it for you. And, and then, you know, as you get those things, you think that's the mastery. But that's still the mind of the novice. The mind of the master is able to become, say you're in a situation where you're in a class with somebody who's going to teach something, you completely empty out your mind of expectations and knowledge and you just receive. That's the mind of the master. Well, that's tricky when you're the novice to do that because you want to know. It's like a teenager. It's a natural part of life. A teenager thinks that they know everything, right? And then the more you live life, the more you realize that it's this great mystery. And if you empty out what you think it's supposed to be, and if you treat it less like this is mine and what can I get, and you just look at it with the eyes of openness and say like, what is this? then you'll learn so much, you know, like say you and I sit down and we have completely different interests and I come into the conversation with the mind of a novice and I think, oh, he just keeps going on and on about these things that I don't care about. And so I don't listen to you at all. And then I go, I leave and then I say to my wife after like, I didn't really like that guy. That's the mind of the novice. But the mind of the master just sits and listens to everything you say. And even if I can't relate at all to anything you say, I find the one common line of truth. And I think, you know, there are these two beautiful practices that have profoundly affected my life. And there are other practices too, you know, music and uh, recovery and um, whatever else, you know, tattoos and meditation and all these things that I, I love and have experienced. And there's this beautiful way of looking at the practices and thinking, how can this serve me to show up as the best version of, version of myself? Where's the through line of truth? And so creating this path of, uh, path of practice is like, I work one-on-one -on -one with people a lot. That's what I prefer to do. Because let's say you and I, you come to a couple classes and you go, oh wow, this practice is really working or it's, I like it or maybe I should ask Tiago Prem about some things that I could do. And then in our conversation we find out that you're, you know, struggling with, um, say you want to lose some weight and, and we start talking about your diet. We start talking about when you eat and then we find out that you're eating uh, a lot of Maybe you're, you don't eat in the morning and you don't, and then you kind of starve yourself in the morning and then you kind of eat all your calories late in the day. So I, I'm able to see from that like, okay, well, let's try and shift the way that you're eating. And then let's try and move a little bit of yoga and meditation in the morning uh, before you eat. And then you eat a little bit, then you eat your main meal at noon, and then you eat a tiny bit in the evening. And that's the only one little thing that we do. And then you start to see some results. You're feeling a little bit better. So then the next time we meet and you go, I'm feeling better and wow, I've lost a bit of weight and I'm feeling clearer. What else could I, could I do? So we start to say, oh, well, why don't you go for a half an hour walk every day? And uh, maybe you start listening to some mantra or I give you a talk to listen to. And then you, you start to feel even better and you're doing this yoga practice. Well, you're not gonna get that from a yoga class you're not. You're going to go, I want to lose some weight. I should go to yoga. You go to yoga. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. I mean, it's so, we're all so unique, right? We have all these different constitutions. So I love working one-on-one -on -one with people. But the challenge is then a lot of the one-on-one -on -one people I work with live far away. And the people who are in-house, they just want to go to the class because that's what you do. You buy a membership to the studio, you go to the class. Well, it's tough for the teacher to really understand that. And also, not all teachers are operating like that. Some teachers are teaching a class where you come in, you do the poses, you go home, which is great. Some people are looking for that. But I think that my passion is to really serve people where they're at. And I started thinking, well, I'm doing all this work for people who don't live in Vancouver, which I love doing, and you know, I hope I can do more of that. That's the times we live in, but how do I, help serve people in the community and have, give them the one-on-one -on -one experience but then the, the, the in every challenge there's a blessing and in every blessing there's a challenge right so we know that so the challenge is with the one-on-one -on -one people is that's really hard to be consistent 
because you get on the call and you're like, I'm going to do it. Say, I'm going to change the diet. I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to do the yoga before the morning meal. I'm going to go for the half an hour walk and you're all ready to go. And then come four days after the call, you're not keeping up. You know, because you live in Sunshine Coast or not near in the city. So when you have a group, then you're more likely to be consistent because you have the group saying, come on, let's do this together. And um, have you heard that saying that's like, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. The African proverb, exactly what we're talking about here. You know, you want to make progress, you go with a group. So what I'm trying to do here is create the one-on-one -on -one mentoring experience with the group support element. That's the whole idea because I really want to see the practice serving people so they can be free to do what they love. Um, and it's not about, for me, unless what they love is like doing advanced yoga poses, I can help you with that. I, I still stand on my hands and put my legs in lotus and leg behind the head and bending the body. It's healthy. I, and I love that and I can help you do that but it doesn't I'm not a one trick pony and yoga is not a one trick practice it's an integrated lifestyle experience where you can be free from keeping up with your practice doesn't matter if you're flexible doesn't matter if you have five minutes or five hours a day doesn't matter what your belief systems are you know Yogi Bhajan he, he used to say if you have a mind you have a mission and I love that saying. It's like everybody is here to do something and has a purpose. And it's usually our own bullshit that stands in our way. And I believe that an integrated yoga practice and a studio like Dharma Temple and uh, the community there is there to support you to recognize that mission and help clear away the nonsense. So the path of practice, the way it works is it's uh, this is the first time we're running it and it will be three Saturdays, two Tuesday evening classes, so that's 7.45 to 9.15, two Zoom calls with a group, which you can do from home, which will be on Thursday evenings. Um, and so it, it totals out to uh, three three-hour sessions on Saturdays, two 90-minute sessions on Tuesdays, and two hour-long Zoom calls on Thursday, and they're spaced out between January and March. Um, and then what we do is we do a inter, like an individual intake interview. So you and I would get together and we would talk about what do you want to learn? Why are you doing this? What's the purpose of this? And then based on the same way I do one on one, but with the group based on what people say, I will create the uh, experience tailored to the group energy and also give specific individual sadhana to the person you know not everybody's dealing with the same stuff and then other things are going to cross over that's just the way it works it's like you a group of people feel called or drawn to do something it's incredibly rare that everyone's going to have some very different uh, idea they're going to attract each other and then uh, you just do your own personal sadhana and keep in touch and i'm there to support you along the way